Today we celebrate the solemnity of Pentecost. Pentecost is the culmination of Easter. Fifty days after the resurrection, the promise that Jesus made in the cynical, remain in Jerusalem till he comes, being the spirit of truth, the advocate. Today the church welcomed that Holy Spirit. And from that day of Pentecost, this Holy Spirit not only was given in the church, but the church in her fidelity continued to pass him on to those who believe. If you notice today, we read the Gospel of Easter. On the day of Easter, we read that Gospel. And today, we read the same Gospel. Because I told you today is the culmination, is the end of the celebration of Easter. Jesus not only gave to the apostles, but now the Holy Spirit is going to come in, in, in His power. When Jesus goes to the Father, as we celebrated two Thursdays ago, and we know that now that He has gone to the Father, from the Father He will send the Promised One, the Advocate, the Paraclete. In the first reading today, we have the episode of what happened on the day of Pentecost. The apostles, being frightened, locked together with some good people, with Mary, the mother of Jesus, as they were in prayer, all of a sudden, the house was shook, a wind came through, and not only filled the house, but all of them with the Holy Spirit. And as that Holy Spirit comes to them, the promised one, they went out and began to proclaim the mystery of salvation, the Paschal mystery, the Christ you put to death, is the Christ we profess he is alive. In him alone there is salvation, repent and believe in the good news. Many of you say, what happened that many people were in Jerusalem at that time? Remember we are dealing with the Old Testament and we know that after 50 days that the chosen people left Egypt and there they celebrate the Passover in a rush as they were now on the journey towards the Promised Land there at Mount Hebron, Mount Sinai God invoked Moses to come to the mountain and there he delivered to him the Ten Commandments so the Jewish people celebrated the gift of the Ten Commandments to Moses and also as a thanksgiving the Jewish people were there to give thanks to God for the land that he gave them. And so they gave, they gave from their earnings one tenth of their income. And that's called the Feast of the Booths. And that's why they were in Jerusalem, to celebrate the giving of the Ten Commandments and also to offer to God their thanksgiving. And at that very moment, as we read, there were many people from different parts of that region of that world, of the world of, of the world of that time, and that's why now Peter, with great energy and encouragement and filled with the Spirit from on high, proclaimed the good news and many come to the faith. We know that St. Paul today reminds us that although the Spirit is one, there is different ministry in the church. And that is very important. And St. Paul compared the Holy Spirit towards the church like a body. A body is one, but have many members, have many parts. And although there are many parts, the body work for one action. And that is really what the body is all about. The body, the mind, is telling me to walk, and so it's giving me the idea that I have now to stand and put my, my feet into action to go to the destination I wish to go. And so is the church. The church is one body. That body that was born on the hill of Calvary from the heart of Jesus. And he was born from the heart of Jesus purposely through blood and water to the sign of the sacrament, the sign of the church for one reason. That this body is now going to be overpowered by the Holy Spirit 
and this body is going to work entirely together. And this is what the Holy Spirit is all about, dear people, because sometimes you say, well, oh, we, don't, we don't see the Holy Spirit. Well, we don't see God the Father neither. Although we know Jesus because he was in the form of each one of us. But the idea that we are united as a church is the gift of the Holy Spirit. Although we are diverse in many languages, in many races, in many, in many uh, back backgrounds that we come from, we are united to be one. And that is what the Holy Spirit does. Yesterday in the video we talk about Babel, how, the, how man in his pride wants to build a tower and achieve his goal to achieve, to go to be next to God. And how God really destroy them in their language and because of that they let go of their of their project and be, they, they were divided. On the opposite, today the Holy Spirit unite all people of different languages and bring them together. Today Peter is speaking in one language and all those people are questioning themselves. Are they not all Galilean? How, the, how, how we are, how dare, how, we, how it comes that all of us are hearing them in our own nation. Because the Holy Spirit wants to inspire us to understand Him fully and understand Him the way we know to understand so that we know that Christ was sent from heaven to do the mission of the Father. That by His life, by His suffering, by his death and burial and rising from the dead, he will bring us reconciliation with the Father and also justification to be again adopted children of God. My dear people, this is really what Pentecost is all about. Pentecost is the gift of the Father and the Son to the Church. And that Pentecost is still working in our days today. My dear people, as we come together today to celebrate our Pentecost, let us remind each one of us the importance of this Pentecost that really happened in our lives. That by virtue of baptism, when we encounter the Holy Spirit for the first time, and by virtue of confirmation, we are invested in this power of the Holy Spirit by His gift. So that we, like the apostles, not only are called the fountain of baptism, but are called also to proclaim Jesus wherever we are. And this is something very important. One of the things that really frightened the church in our days is our body, our members of our body, is not really put out the great gift of the Holy Spirit in the way we live. You know, a few days ago, I was listening to Pope Francis, and he said something that is very, very, very um, dear to me. He said, it's better the church make mistakes than the church does not make mistakes. Because when the church make mistakes, it means the church is active, when we don't do mistakes, it's because we are, we are not really interested in what we believe. So remember, it's better that we make mistakes than we are inactive. What good it is for a child who wants to walk but does not make the effort to walk? Although the parent is calling him to come to give the first step when the child refuses because of his security and because he knows that he can fall. It's better that the child fall once, twice, three times, and more than that, in order that the child tomorrow he is able to stand on his own. And the same thing with us. We cannot expect others to do the job. We are called all to do and build the kingdom of Christ here on earth. The Father loves us. And because he loves us, he gave us his greatest gift of his son. That by his sacrifice that he did on the hill of Calvary, he wiped away our sin. And now, in order that that message or that gift continue to reside with us, 
He give us the Holy Spirit so that that Holy Spirit will remind us, will strengthen us in the same words that Jesus has spoken to us. And, but because our mind and heart were not endowed with the Holy Spirit, we cannot understand them. But now that we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we are going and we are able to understand the words of Jesus to us. As the Father has loved me and have sent me to do his job, I now send you. Go now and teach all nations. Go now and make the message known to all nations. Whoever accept your message, they are saved. Whoever refuse to accept it, they are condemned. The Holy Spirit, dear people, is very powerful in the church. It's powerful in the reading of the gospel when that Holy Spirit illuminate us as the word of God reaches our ear so that that word will reach our heart. It's not only we read it and we hear it and proclaim it, but enable us to live it. The Holy Spirit is in the teaching of the church, in the magisterium, in the authority of the Holy Father, in the authority of our bishops, in the authority of those who lead us. The Holy Spirit is among us, that although we are different, we come together, and together with that great Spirit, as St. Paul put it so well, we can be able to call God our Father. May that Holy Spirit that is within us be enabled to really reach out its goal, by let that Holy Spirit lead us to proclaim Jesus, first and foremost by our life, second by our action. My dear people, this is the, the, the call for the new evangelization. The apostles, imbued by the Holy Spirit, filled with the strength, not frightened anymore, proclaim Jesus even in a very disturbing world that they live in. And so we continue to do so even with the obstacle that comes our way. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. God bless.